Hey, how you doing? My name is Jake McCarthy. And I'm Ingo Coons. Alright, so what we're going to do is give you some commentary over this uh, laser cut acrylic frame we did for uh, Circuit Circus. So first stage uh, is uh, sketching, and this, actually, in hindsight, looking back, Ingo, this didn't really take long at all, the sketching phase. No, the overall concept came along pretty well, pretty quickly, and uh, it, I think it represents exactly what we were looking for, what we were shooting for. So a little bit more about the laser cut acrylic frame. Uh, basically, it's um, instead of like the poly resin, which has a little bit more three D effect. This is uh, it's more two dimensional, and um, it's got a clear face window, and the photo just inserts and slides on in. But um, as far as this project was concerned, I worked on it um, probably over about ten sessions, over about three weeks, two three weeks. That's right, two or three weeks. Yeah. So it was um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the project got pitched, and then um, we had a we had an end of month due date, and in between different projects, other projects that we were working on, I just was kind of working on this one, and um, we were working with some new software that um, that none of us had used before called Screen Ninja, which is what you're seeing all this uh, time lapse stuff here on the screen. So, <laughs> Screen Ninja. Huh? So what we had going on with. Um, with all the sketching and stuff was just real rough ideas. Um, I did all the sketching in uh, Sketchbook Pro, which is another new piece of software. Great program. Yeah. Great program. So once the sketching was done, we went into to cleanup phase and found out that this was actually the most lengthiest uh, uh, process. So it got to the well, point. Yeah, it got to the point where I was just I, I can't. Believe, why aren't these lines just straight to begin with? <laughs> So, and a lot of people are like, why, Ingo, why don't you tell everybody why we would want to clean this stuff up this early on in the project? Well, we want everybody to have a good visual representation of what what we're trying to present to them and, and give them a good, clear, clean idea of, um, of the concept. And uh, for us, it works great, but, you know, for somebody, you know, for the department head that we're going to present this to, he really needs to see it, you know, as clean as he can see it. And, and we even go through a, the coloring process, the coloring stage on this as well. Which most cases we don't do, usually do that. But yeah, this project this was, a, this was a unique project. It was. It was very unique. So we and it, it turned out really rather well. Yeah, the process the process that we went through to do this project was um, much. Uh, it, it was a lot different than what we do normally. So we were actually able to to dive into this one and really uh, get back to the roots of design and roots of the process with. The sketching, concepting, and coloring, and whatnot. Um, ironically enough, I mean, I've been a designer for a while. Ingo, you've been a designer. That's right. For yeah. some time now. That's right. Um, Since 1993. Norm yeah. Normally, when we when we work on projects and we present sketches, normally the clients or our department heads recognize that it's a sketch. That's right. Yeah. And uh, most of the time around here, they they don't realize it's a sketch. They don't. They they really don't. Yeah. It's, it's that good. They they think it's they think it's uh they think it's the actual print product print product. Yeah, I'm like, I, we have to remind them like no 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 this is just a <laughs> this is just a sketch. And with previous with knowing that going into this, um, once the actual colored sketch was done, I gave it to uh, I gave it to our our department director who presented it to the circus circus president. And I was like whoa 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 it's just a That's sketch. Right. And he's like don't worry about it. I have a good working relationship <laughs> with this guy. Everything's everything's gonna work out fine. So, Ingo, why don't you tell them what they're not seeing in this in this final final nin screen ninja capture? It's not, you're not seeing all the cursing and all the. <laughs> you're not seeing the lunchtime <laughs> movies. Yeah, the lunchtime movies <laughs> and the cursing. No. No matter what, out. no matter what I did with Screen Ninja, <laughs> I would always tell it, "Hey, just record Sketchbook Pro." Or if I was working Illustrator, like, just record Illustrator. But whenever we take our hour lunch, and we always watch, uh, we always watch Netflix, regardless if it's uh, like documentaries or right now we're watching Office Space. Um, it would always capture that's right lunchtime, like, whether so, we wanted it to or not. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and this is this is the one thing I really like about Screen Ninja is that. A lot of people come by and they'll they'll hear us listening to music or laughing or and Ingo I Ingo and I cursing have really, yeah, yeah we have a really good working <laughs> relationship um, and it's it's something that I've always wanted and people they, they come by and they're like man Jake and Ingo don't really do anything yeah what are they doing in there they're like yeah 
Jeez. It's all that sounds like a party's going on in there. Yeah, it sounds like we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> and so a lot of this whole screen ninja capture our work idea stemmed from, you know, every time people say we don't do anything, why don't you actually take a look at what we're actually doing? That's right. That's so, right. But that um this part of the project, the the cleaning up, I swear, I, I was really close to almost, almost getting carpal tunnel. So <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it, this portion of it right here took just as long as the the initial concept or the whole concept itself. Just this cleanup part of it. It's a process that's really, really important. And I I think it turned out really, really well. And it just came together really well. And this is our first project, capturing it from beginning to end, from from concept to finish. And uh, we even we even do it in 3D. Get to see a 3D model, what you saw in the beginning of the video. Now this coloring phase, this this actually just looked really cool, just the screen capture. Um, the colors aren't 100% accurate um, based off what we were going for. We had done some previous advertising um, and some signage for our various booths that we have in the Circus Circus Adventure Dome. So to maintain brand consistency between what we have going on at green screen and what we have going on at thrill ride i mean green screen the the the, the customers stand in front of a, uh, a photo a green screen background and then we rip them out and we put them in front of um shit what do you find uh, curtains and curtains and clowns and midway uh, like a midway scene where there's mm -hmm. like a bunch of games and activities and rides going on in the background uh exciting stuff like that props nose and glasses and things I think you even have a dog. I think, yeah, I even have a clown dog in there. So, <laughs> but then at the same time, there's the thrill ride side of it where they have like various kid rides that the kids get on and then they take videos of them or they can get prints and that kind of stuff. So what I wanted to do was make something, we wanted to make something that was visually consistent with everything that the customer is going to experience from the moment they walk in to, to the Adventure Dome. To actually purchasing their product and and running into the various operations that we have there so I didn't want to make it because the actual PNG overlays that we have for the uh, for the photos they Ingo got really crazy with those and really creative with them I wanted to make something that was if it's gonna be a photo frame that these photos these crazy wacky photos are gonna exist in That's I wanted right. something that was visually consistent but also neutral enough to not overpower what was in the photo. Yeah, clean and simple and yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. But interesting at the same time. We want something interesting that they're gonna be enticed to buy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's always it, I try to remind people it's like people ask me, so you're you're a graphic designer. I'm, I'm well technically yes because I'm going through the graphic design process and I didn't really understand exactly what I was getting into when I took this job, but it's really product development. It really is, yeah. It, it really is from beginning to end. It's, it's what it is. It's more than, it's not purchasing agent, it, it's product development, yeah. Yeah, because the things that we're designing, yes, there's graphic design elements to it, we go through the graphic design process, but ultimately, unlike an advertisement that sits in a, in a magazine or a billboard or a sign, in situations like this, we're actually designing products that people are going to purchase and take home with them. That's right. They have it's it's designing something with a little bit more longevity than something like an ad that'll that'll run for a couple of months and then get ditched and then we have to make up a new one. That's right, and it's so, completely custom, completely custom. You can't find it anywhere else, and uh, you know that that's special, completely custom. So. Because because of the because of the uniqueness of this, like here's here's the sketch that was the sketch that they showed, the that yeah, our that's product right. had that's, showed. They showed it circus circus, yeah. To the, so the we yeah making something that actually exists for longer than you know a contract for an advertisement. This is something that someone's gonna buy and will probably ultimately put in a box in their garage somewhere. But still, <laughs> yeah. they bought it, they remember it, they want to they want to. They want to remember their time here in Vegas, so they'll actually probably end up displaying this on a mantle or a bookshelf or something like that. So it also has to function in a home or in an office or wherever. That's so going right. going into this vectoring <coughs> state stage, we um, 
yeah, basically just take the sketch, bring it in, and then uh, I actually like working with the pen tool a lot. Um, live trace is live trace is cool and it has its place, but I'm I'm more of a I, I like Bezier's myself. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a path junkie myself, that's yes, for sure. <laughs> and speaking of path, knowing Illustrator and now knowing 3D software like Cinema 4D, don't you wish that the splines and the path, like the splines of 3D and the paths of Illustrator, work for the same? Yeah, I, I really do. I, I, I find myself doing that a lot, you know, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> going from Cinema 4D to, to, Vec, yeah, to an Illustrator. Yeah, it seems like they should work the same, but they don't. Uh, yeah, Pretty the, similar, but the 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 the, sh the sheer knowledge of shortcut keys you have to know between going from sketchbook to Illustrator to Photoshop to to Cinema 4D. Sometimes I'll be in Cinema 4D and I'm trying to command spacebar zoom in on something. I'm like, oh shit, it's, I have to hold down the two. Key. <laughs> and then I'll come back to Illustrator and I'm like, I need to zoom in on this, and I'll hold down the two key. And I'm like, ah, fuck it, it's command shift. It, or it's command spacebar. And I yeah. do that a lot. <laughs> So, so here I'm, I'm getting all the color. Now these colors are accurate. These colors we're going straight off the colors that we used in a previous advertisement, and um, these colors are accurate. Same thing with this with this starburst pattern. That's that, that's accurate. I was looking at the circles that I had put in the perimeter, like where the edges of the stars are, and I was like, you know what? It actually looks better without it. Now this is the fun part. This is a really fun part, and oh, yeah. it's also the part that was really getting my goose the other day because I could not connect <laughs> these two pads yeah, for some to make reason, the contour. They just, yeah, they would not connect. They wouldn't join. Yeah. So I ultimately <laughs> went into Photoshop, took the took the JPEG that I had, outlined that, stroked it, brought it back into Illustrator, did that. So when you're when you're taking something from Illustrator and bringing it into Cinema 4D, the contour of it, it ha it has to be in that legacy Illustrator 8 form. That's right, yeah. You can't take a CS5 contour in Illustrator and import it into in the Cinema 4D. So once you know that workaround, you can actually bring this in. That's how we get the shape of it extruded out. And actually building the frame itself was, was easy. It was this... Um, uh, the, the injected molded back that, yeah. that we had to construct. Yeah, reconstruct, yeah. That's so, a, that took some doing. Yeah, yeah, A lot it of did. pulling and... So what was, what was happening here was um, I was having an issue with my caps when I was using hypernerves. It just would not slice through on the cap. It would do the perimeter, but not the cap. So I was like, screw it, I know the workaround. And then there was a whole bunch of polygonal mess back here. Which you fixed. <laughs> I fixed it. And um, I didn't get the actual stand of the frame accurate, but given the nature that this is just a quick demo and I was eyeballing this, I wasn't actually measuring it. Oh, wait a minute, what's this here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what I saw? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. I, I don't know if you guys caught that. If you guys are watching it, you might, we might want to <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry, go on, before I rudely interrupted you. So looking here at the final render, um, yeah, this was three, three, three weeks in the making just to do this, and this is ultimately what the client is going to see to give the approval of yes. And I think this. It, it represents the property well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>